Hi, this is uh, part two of properties of determinants. So we are in the middle of a calculation uh, for because we intend to illustrate uh, the theorems we have here. Uh, there were three theorems that we um, uh, learned, and one of them had to do with um, the first of which had to do with swapping two rows or two columns. Um, the second one, let's see, the second one. Uh, has to do with multiplying a row or a column by scalar and the last one uh, that we learned had to do with an operation very common in RREF type of thing um, and that has to do with multiplying a row or a column by scalar and then adding that new row or new column to another row or another column and so we're illustrating an example in which uh, we're applying all of these things and in our example we start with this 4 by 4 matrix and uh, we continue to apply uh, row operations and then uh, what we want uh, really to do is to uh, we want to uh, establish uh, how the determinant of these matrix relates to the determinant of a newly computed matrix how this relates to the determinant of a new matrix right where this new matrix is obtained by applying row operations and what is the point of applying row operations well so it happens that sometimes these newly uh, reduced matrices are uh, because of the structure are uh, are going to give us an easier calculation of determinants. Remember, a very neat property of the determinant of a triangular matrix is that is equal to the product of the matrix entries that are on the diagonal, right? So if we were able to row reduce the matrix and create several zeros in many locations, then we may end up with a new matrix uh, that has, because of its shape and structure, it has a more straightforward calculation of the determinant. So in part one, this was the last uh, part of the calculation where we were at, in which we were relating the determinant of a sub 5 to the determinant of a sub 6, and it so happens that we go from a 5 to a 6 by uh, meaning of multiplying row 2 in a sub 5 by the scalar negative 1 half that gives us the new matrix a sub 6 and we were able to use um, one of those uh, theorems and then relate that uh, in fact the determinant of the original matrix is equal to 2 times the determinant of a sub 6 now let's see what happens if we uh, apply uh, an operation of the type um, uh, row 2 multiplied by negative 4 and then adding that new row to row 3. This would define the matrix A sub 7 and what we know from this type of operation is that the uh, determinant of A sub 6 is equal to the determinant of A sub 7. Right. So uh, <clears throat> then that would give uh, the uh, relation between uh, this expression and that expression. So remember what we're saying here, we're carrying, um, we're keeping track of how the determinant of A relates to the determinant of each of these matrices. So we may compute A sub 8 also by uh, a mean of uh, adding the scalar multiple of a row to another row and therefore the relationship between um, a sub 7, the term of a sub 7 and the term of a sub 8 is what we have uh, here. Um, so let me just keep track of uh, dividing uh, that we remember that uh, the term of a is equal to uh, this term of a is equal to this which is also equal to that right because of uh, uh, one of the properties we're uh, discussing and then uh, the same applies for determinant of a sub 9 so the determinant of a therefore is equal to 2 times the determinant of a7 
and by application of the same property uh, maybe two or three times uh, we generate matrices a sub 8 a sub 9 and a sub 10 um, and uh, we can find that uh, each each of these new matrices uh, has the property that determinant of uh, as we had mentioned the determinant of a sub 8 is equal to the determinant of a sub 9 Right, and so this would be giving the connection between uh, these two equalities, and also the determinant of a sub nine is equal to the determinant of uh, the new matrix a sub ten, right? Which also gives the connection between uh, these two equalities, and they are all going back to being equal to the determinant of a. So very importantly, um, at this stage, uh, this column here, column two, is almost a pure column it needs uh, this number three to be uh, be to be zero out uh, but at that point uh, column two would then become a pivot column so now a new matrix a11 is generated by swapping uh, row three and row four on the matrix a10 and uh, because of the properties of swapping rows then um, this gives the relationship um, the, the reason why this negative appears here is precisely because of the theorem. So the first theorem we discussed tells us that uh, the determinant of the new matrix is equal to the negative of the determinant of the original matrix uh, when the only thing we're doing uh, is transforming A by swapping rows or columns. So this, is, this theorem implies implies that um, this theorem implies that the determinant of a11 is minus the determinant of a sub 10 which means uh, that uh, that's the reason why we have a negative here so this this uh, this calculation uh, is following right determinant of a we have done um, a lot of steps in between determinant of a equals negative two times determinant of a 11. And now we generate a new matrix a sub 12 uh, which results from multiplying the fourth row of a 11 by a constant uh, 1 over 55 uh, and so in doing so, we have that the determinant of A12 equals the constant, uh, the scalar, 1 over 55 times the determinant of A11. Uh, and uh, from here, we can solve for the determinant of A11, which gives us the following 55 times the determinant of A12 equals the determinant of A11. Right. So now we have an expression for a11 and we can substitute this expression uh, in here so again remember this comes from uh, the long chain of equalities right we have the determinant of a equals something or other etc etc and this is now uh, equal to minus two times determinant of a11 and now we have an expression for the determinant of a11 and once we substitute that expression, we have 55 times the determinant of A12. 55 multiplied by 2 is 110. And uh, we preserve that negative, uh, uh, the negative sign we have there, the negative 1. So, and uh, at this stage, um, it is straightforward to uh, compute this matrix we have managed now to transform the original matrix not necessarily into RREF as you can see this these are the only pivot column here is the first column but more importantly uh, this matrix this matrix A12 is a matrix that has zeros below the main diagonal and uh, therefore this matrix has a certain structure here are the uh, main diagonal the, the diagonal elements of that matrix are all equal to one and so because there are uh, zeros below the diagonal but non-zeros above the diagonal 
uh, this matrix is what we call an upper triangular. It's a triangular matrix, but specifically uh, we call this an upper triangular matrix. Okay, and so triangular matrices are going to have do have a special property which we learn back uh, when we discuss uh, the calculation definition of a determinant. So I leave you here as an exercise to uh, figure out what is the determinant of A12. It's much easier than computing the determinant of the original matrix. So the exercise is what is the determinant of A sub 12 once you know that um, uh, this this is a very straightforward calculation. You can go and review the notes uh, on the uh, lecture on the introduction of determinants when we introduce the definition. One of the special type of matrices we learn uh, is the matrices that we call triangular. So once you know what is the determinant of A12, you can substitute that here, multiply that by minus 110, and that would be exactly equal to the determinant of the original matrix. So sometimes a little bit of labor may be involved by application of uh, row operations, but that leads into a transform matrix, which has a much more manageable calculation of determinant. And we close our discussion here with non-singular matrix equivalences round seven, this theorem that we keep updating uh, throughout the, the course, uh, throughout the class, and so uh, we note here on uh, property 11, determinant of A is non-zero. Um, if the matrix has a non-zero determinant, uh, this is basically property 11, or uh, line 11 here, will imply every single one of the previous 10 statements. So uh, this here, meaning that they're all equivalent, is that one implies all the other ones, right? So uh, having a non-zero determinant is something that will uh, become an immediate flag uh, or an indication that the, the matrix row reduces to the identity. Uh, it will be also an indication that the matrix has an inverse, is invertible, the columns are linearly independent and spanning, so they're a basis of CN. Um, the rank of the matrix is the number of columns, the nullity, the dimension of the null space is zero, uh, and so on. So all these properties, columns of the matrix are linearly independent, right? Um, so not only linearly independent, but also spanning. So now the determinant will be another way of classifying uh, the matrix. Very importantly, non-zero determinant is going to be connected to non-singularity. So we say determinant is not zero, that's analogous, uh, as equivalent as saying that the matrix is non-singular. Non-singular matrix has a non-zero determinant.